of you have been asking, why does my narcissist go no contact, go on these silent treatments, and keep coming back? If they were done with me, why don't they just leave me alone? Today I'm going to answer your question. Just stay tuned. everyone and welcome back to my channel you know i often get asked the question why does my narcissist go no contact with the person that's in my life the narcissist in my life go no contact they put me on these silent treatments and then they come back i think they're gone they've been gone for months and then all of a sudden they start coming back and hoovering over me love bombing me all over again kind of sort of Kinda, because they know they already got you totally emotionally attached to them. So they come back and, and then they start kind of willing, you know, working their way back. Why? Why don't they just leave me alone? I'm going to give you one simple solution today. First, I'm going to give you an answer because you are a constant supply. You are a constant supply. I remember when I was dating my narcissist, we would go, he would go on a silent treatment, and I have a video, I'll probably attach it somewhere up here so you can revert back to that. But he would put me on these silent treatments. And it started with him kind of stonewalling me a little bit, just kind of being emotionally unavailable. Well, he had pulled me all the way into him emotionally. I became very codependent on him. Narcissists make you very codependent on them. You become emotionally addicted to them. You're totally addicted to your narcissist emotionally. And when they're not there, you fiend for them. Even if it's a day or two, you fiend for them. And it will cause you to just be in this confused place like, Lord, what's going on? I thought he said he loved me. I was his everything. He showered me with gifts. And once he gets you totally pulled into him, he starts playing with your mind a little bit. He makes you start second guessing your worth. See, he already, what he did was when he started playing with you, and he started toiling with your mind, making you second guess yourself, second guess your worth. And then he, you know, nine times out of ten, he disconnected you from your family and disconnected you from your friends. And he knows you're all alone. And he knows you've become totally emotionally dependent on him. So when he goes silent, as a form of punishment or to seek out new supply because he has somebody else because they usually have somebody else. But when you hurt their ego or they just came up with a master manipulation plan because they need you, they got enough from you, they just suck the life out of you and they need to move on to a new source of supply. Why do they come back to me? They come back because they know that you are totally emotionally dependent on them and they know they can continue to come back and play. And so as long as you allow them to keep coming back and you stay emotionally dependent on your narcissist because they'll keep coming back as long as you are, they know that you are supply. They know that you feel like you can't live without them. That you feel like you can't because you can. You can't live. You lived without them before they were there and you can live without them now. You really can. But anyway, they think, they know that you feel like you can. And so they come to toil. They are snakes. Why are they snakes? Because they are very hurting. And they're broken. But not really broken, just really injured individuals suffering with these roots of rejection and humiliation and injustice to such a place that they don't even see that they're wrong. Some of them know they are, but a lot of them feel like they're superior. They feel like they're better than you. They really don't feel like it, but they put on this facade. And then to them, that's what they think. They're deceived, totally deceived. And, and people only give you what they got period so they deceived you they put you all the way in and now they have you in this place of confusion i'm gonna tell you something the best way to get over a narcissist is cut your losses you didn't even lose anything but you think you are so cut your losses and start going to what you call a rehab figure out why they were attracted to you what attracted my narcissist to me a lot of times social status doing something good 
they always know there's a void that you have. There's a void. Some people are like, I was perfect. No, there was something. Because a narcissist feeds off of your voids. They feed off of your emotional wounds. They feed off your emotional wounds. And as long as those emotional wounds are unresolved and you're not addressing some of the issues of your past, may it be daddy issues, you can be a very successful person. But if you're still suffering with abandonment issues or rejection issues and, and, and humiliation issues, from your past being betrayed, somebody doing you wrong in your past and in your childhood and you haven't really overcome them, then your narcissist has leached on to those emotional issues that you have, your emotional wounds, and they're toiling with them. And that's why you keep letting them come back. That's why they can play the cat and mouse game. People do you with how you allow them. They treat you. You teach people how to treat you. Period. That's it. That's all. And only way to get a narcissist out of your life. Let me tell you something. I'm going to say this. And I probably shouldn't say it. But I'm going to say it anyway. Because <laughs> I, I think I wrote it in the ebook that's connected to this course. And one of the things I did to my narcissist is I wasn't ready to let him go. And I say it. I say it. I wasn't. But I knew that once I realized that my narcissist was just as injured as I was emotionally, I didn't know how to let him go. I, at the end, I knew the only way to let him, to, 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 to just get this craziness out of my life and this cycle of confusion out of my life is I had to cut him off. But before I got to the place where I could cut him off, I just kind of had to use it against him. So how did I use it against him? I starved him. He was looking for me. He would go on these silent treatments and I just started ignoring him. Like, oh, well, I don't care. And sometimes it took a while because he was seeking other supply. So he wasn't worried about me at first when he first started it. And I realized, like, wait, and I got schooled. Somebody kind of schooled me. It was like, when they leave, ignore it. Act like you could care less that they're gone. And so some of you guys get on. For, now I watch this so much with women. I think it's crazy. Men do it too, but a lot of our women get on there. And I can't believe somebody did me wrong. And, you know, you know, like, uh, karma is crazy and you just get out there and show that you all down and out they know that you're feeding their egos i'm telling you you're feeding their egos and you let them know they can come back but if you first of all were to retreat back from all of that don't rush into another relationship to make yourself feel good just start doing you on a whole nother level start addressing your issues but show, when you are going to be on social media be on social media showing that you're having a wonderful amazing time starve them and when they do reach out to you because listen how does a narcissist do they'll start reaching out to you they'll start hoovering a little bit so what my narcissist used to do he start calling me randomly like what especially around the times that i knew it would be him because he had this habit of calling me at like six or seven in the morning like clockwork and then when he left and he started coming back at six o'clock in the morning he would call me and then hang up the phone or something you know what i'm trying to say and so he would call me hang up the phone and it made me wonder, those anxieties, you know, oh my God, he's thinking about me. I know that was him. I know he's thinking about me because I was thinking about him nonstop. So I was hoping he was thinking about me. And he would do that for maybe a week, on and off. This was crazy. I'm talking about this is just some psycho crap, I'm telling you. So he would do it on and off. And then, all of a sudden, he decided, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just start showing up places that I know she's at. And then there was a time, listen, I went through this for some years, y'all. And then there were times where he would just call me like he talked to me yesterday and it's been five months. Like, hi, babe. How you been? So listen, I was thinking about, you know, I know you needed a new car. Listen, he always came back with a major gift. It was nothing, it was nothing small. He came back, I have children, so he made sure kids had Christmas if it was around Christmas. He made sure I had a, my car was running right. He came in and was like, I know I've been gone, but I'm paying your bills. He would do something like he does love me. I knew he loved me. I knew he didn't come back for five or six months, go really hard, and then start going back to his old negative ways. If that, if it took that long. And the whole time, he was belittling me 
because I wasn't the one that you could really, you come out and start, you ain't this, you're not that, and you're, you know, being really blatantly belittling. I couldn't handle it. But he would start in little ways belittling me, belittling, making me second guess. Like, I know I just put my keys over there and he would take my keys. Just little stuff, stuff that made me second guess my mental capacity. Like, I think I'm losing my mind like something's wrong. Like, he really was playing with me. And he knew he was. He knew he was. And how could he do that? Because of the fears that I had in my life. Listen, you guys. If you want people to stop playing games with you, whether they're a narcissist or just a toxic person who don't know their worth and you didn't team up with them, first of all, understand that people, you, you teach people how to treat you at the end of the day. And if you are ready to take your life to the next level, I am telling you, it is time for you to heal the wounds of your past. You have to figure out what it is that's drawing them in your life. They keep coming back. Or it may not be this narcissist that keep coming back when I keep attracting these same type of people in my life. How in the world do I stop this process? And I say it in plenty of videos. And I come back here because at the end of the day, you have to deal with you. You have to deal with you. You got to stop running from your pain. Because if you don't, you will cause yourself more pain. Pain begets pain at the end of the day. But happiness begets happiness. You attract who you are. If you attracted that narcissist, there is something in you. Most narcissists suffer with the root of rejection, the root of abandonment, and the wounds, the wounds of rejection, abandonment, and humiliation. Shame. And they're very shamed. That's why, you know, their um, egos are easily... You, you can hurt them easily, I'm telling you, because they're shamed easily, you know, and um, those that root of rejection, they don't feel worthy. That's why they put on such a facade. You'll find out the narcissist hanging his head in his quiet time more than he lifts it up and try, try to, he tries to link up or the, he, she tries to link up with very successful people because those successful people, when they're around them, says they're successful. And then, they, and then you have narcissists who are very successful. Um, the narcissist I was dating was an engineer very successful person and he had a lot of he had some grassroots programs that he started out for young people he owned his own football league so there was a lot of good this is a sad thing he had a lot of good in his life it was like oh my goodness how could this great person be this so evil at the end of the day but then when I found out some of the things that happened in his childhood as I began to heal the way I forgave him was to have compassion over him and not compassion enough to go back and be with him because he hadn't changed but compassion because I needed to forgive him so that I could release the power he had over my life at the end of the day so how do you stop a person why do people come back in and out with the silent treatment go con no contact and they come back go no contact and come back one because you let them you stop letting them come back they'll stop and that and number two is because you there's a source of supply there so what are you giving them is it sex is it money? Is it a place to stay? What is it that you're giving them? A lot of time, you're feeding their ego because you want them back so bad that you will do whatever. I've seen women, I'm going to say this really quickly, but I've seen women, you know, want a narcissist so bad, they get into some like type of love triangle, this threesomes and foursomes and doing some really just self-demeaning things to stay with a narcissist and i'm telling you today that if that if you've gotten yourself in a place and you find yourself doing some things that you would have never done they got you doing things you would have never done i'm telling you then it's time for you to step back it's time for you and i know you're gonna have some lonely nights because the narcissist pulls you in they take over all your time they, they hoover over you so hard. They take up all your time. They, they Like I said in the beginning, when they're love bombing, they just they give you all this attention. And now all of a sudden, you're by yourself and you don't know what to do. So I'm telling you right now, if you want to get away from this narcissist, if you want to detox from this narcissist, this narcissist, excuse that, and I'm not going to redo the video, but if you want to overcome this narcissist and the feelings and the emotional attachment, you have to begin to deal with you. And this is the thing. Everything that you're feeling like you're with this narcissist is if you address those feelings, I feel alone when he's not here. I feel like I'm not worthy now. I feel this, I feel that. Those are all lies. Your feeling is not a lie. Like the, way the, the fact that you're feeling it, but those thoughts are not true. Because you are somebody and somebody will love you for you. Not somebody that came in and played with your heart. Not somebody who got issues, you know, of the 
mounts and mounts of issues. But somebody who's healthy, once you become healthy, once you become, you begin to know who you are. Once you begin to love you, you're going to attract somebody else that loves them and who knows how to love themselves. And you know how to love yourselves. And y'all know how to love each other. And, and and this makes for a very healthy relationship. So, you know, my um, advice is and my encouragement to you is today is stop letting people do you the way you don't want to be done. And if you're in, in a relationship with a narcissist and he went no contact and now you see him creeping back in and you start questioning, it is because there isn't some supply there. One, because you're letting him. But two, there is some supply. Cut off the supply. Starve the narcissist. They need attention more than everybody. Starve them. Don't give them any. Ignore the phone calls. Ignore them. I know you want to see him. I know you miss him. I know you've gotten emotionally attached to him. But you can do this. You are strong enough and you can do it. And so I'm going to encourage you to do that today. Listen, I'm going to always let y'all know I am available to help you, to support you, to be emotional support for you. Um, My prices are very affordable. So if you just need some emotional support, you know, reach out to me and you can always email me any questions that you have. And I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Listen, thanks for watching my video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Y'all ring the bell, push that bell so you get notified when I come on. And also share my videos. You never know who's going through, who's going through these same emotional issues that you're going through. Share these videos on social media and maybe somebody on your page is going through it. They can get some support just like you got some support. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.